Good morning, church. It's good to see everyone. Christian Lowry, where are you at? Come on up, son. Our our, uh, scripture reader for today. For God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether things on earth or things in heaven by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. Thank you, Chris. Appreciate it. Appreciate it so very, very much. Thank you, buddy. (laughs) I like the shoes. They're rocking there. Uh, We're in the book of Colossians, and so uh, we... uh, Dove into a little bit of it last week, and so now we're getting into the supremacy of Christ. And so we've asked Phil to do this particular lesson. Phil, come on up, brother. And uh, let's have a word of prayer. You don't mind? You don't mind me praying over your sermon, do you? Need more and more. Need more and more. Well, I do too. Every time I preach, I'm thinking that. So, Lord, we love you. I thank you for my brother here. You know he loves you deeply and uh, loves to see lost folks find the good news of Jesus. So bless him with wisdom and with discernment as he shares out of your word today with power. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And the church said? Amen. All right, brother, preach the word. All right. So I'm sitting there with the dogs. By the way, I started to wear my suit. But it occurred to me I don't have a suit. They can say what they want to. I'm going to read to you. The supremacy of Christ was on the board a while ago. This is the scary part of the supremacy of Christ, just a little bit. God is just. I'll get to Colossians right after I read you this. God is just. He will pay back trouble to those who trouble you. Payback's coming and give relief to you who are troubled, and to us as well. This will happen when the Lord Jesus is revealed from heaven in blazing fire with his powerful angels. He's no one to mess with. He's coming, not only for the saved, payback time, He will punish those who do not know God. Look around at your culture, brothers, sisters. Just look around. When you don't, you get up in the morning and you don't know if you're a male or female. And if the mirror look, get in your bathroom and disrobe and look in the mirror. If that won't do it for you. That is going to be the kind he approaches. This thing cuts both ways. He will punish those who do not know God and do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus. I'm 76. At 28, Bill Smith told me I needed to obey the gospel. I said, He said, have you ever done that? I said, obey the gospel. What are you talking about? They told me I had to hear and believe and repent and be baptized. That's what I did. But now at 28, hear what? Believe what? He said, the gospel. I said, what's that? Gospel music, Chuck Wagon Gang on the radio? 
He said, you don't even know what it is. I said, well, enlighten me. It's the first time I ever heard God becoming flesh, dying on a cross, raised from the, put in the tomb, raised from the dead. I never had heard that. Somehow I missed that. And boy, did it make it troublesome. God is going to punish those who do not know God and who do, do not obey the gospel of the Lord Jesus. They'll be punished with everlasting destructions and shut out from the presence of the Lord, from the majesty of his power on the day he comes to be glorified in his holy people and to be marveled at, at among all those who have believed. This includes you because you believe that testimony. That's 2 Thessalonians. You get to Colossians. Here's what I want all of us to do. I've already done it. Go home today. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Read the last two chapters of Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. It'll take you a few minutes. Just read that. When you get that read, listen to this. Read all the first and second pages in the epistles from Acts on. Start in the book of Acts. Read the first two pages. Don't worry about the rest of it. Read the first two pages. To get to Romans, read the first two pages. First Corinthians, second, read the first two pages. It's taking you minutes. It won't take you long. You say, why are you telling us we should turn to that from time to time? It tells you who Jesus is. It took me three full pages to read to you who Jesus is. I never seen anything like it. I just kept thinking, of it, and I write that. I'll show you that in a minute. But in Colossians, check this out. First thing that's brought up. Because we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus for all the saints, you've already heard about, listen, that took it, how long it took him to get to this? One, two, three, four, five. Five verses. We, we've already heard about in the word of truth, you know the truth, the truth will set you free. The gospel that has come to you all over the world, this gospel is proclaiming fruit and growing just as it has been doing among you since the day you heard it. It's not long drawn out. <clears throat> you can get the information in a day. I did. I got it in about an hour. Bill Smith told me what the gospel was. Jesus dying, being buried, raised from the dead. I'm like, you can live forever. He said, you can live forever. I said, it's too good to be true. It's too good to be true. He said, it probably is too good for us, but it is true. I said, how in the world did I miss that? I said, I'm going to have to check what you just said about Jesus. I've got to go home and read that because you have to forgive me, preacher, but I don't believe you. But I'm going to find out if you were telling me the truth or not. So I went home and I read through the verses. Since the day you heard it and understood God's grace and all, he learned, they learned it from a guy named Epaphras. So the gospel is spelled out. They drop down just a little bit. The saints in the kingdom of light has qualified you to share it. He's rescued us from, he's a rescuer. He, he, That he's rescued you from the dominion of darkness. He's brought us into the kingdom of the Son he loved. Make sure you know that, see. Jesus died, was buried, raised from the dead. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, last two chapters, he arises from the dead. Two times, two out of the two. Matthew and Mark said, go out there and preach the gospel to people so they'll know and understand it. Because a lot of people, they don't know what the gospel is. They hear a little bit about Jesus, you know, well, it has to be spelled out. 
there's the kingdom. Repent because the kingdom is near. Jesus said it. John the Baptist said it. The apostles said it. When you get to the book of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, you'll say, let's see. Uh-oh, the kingdom now, it was near. But if you get to the book of Acts, now it's here. So what we tell people is to repent for the kingdom is here. I'm a member of it talking to, with you. That's in the book of Colossians. Now we get to the text they gave me to talk about. Jesus is the image of the invisible God. Start with this. Uh, how about like a, he was like a root out of dry ground. You're walking across the Sahara Desert and number sand dunes, and you look out there, it's hot. And I mean, it's just sand. Not a blade of grass or tree anywhere. And coming out of that is a little green shoot. We hang around and sit around and count time by Jesus Christ. The entire world. And then we hear all this stuff about what we shouldn't have to worry about, you know, all them unhinged Christians, you know, that Bible thumper, that redneck Bible toter. They have cursed me. It is pitiful. Jesus is the image of the invisible God. I'm going to give you his resume first, just right here. And then I'm going to share a sermon with you. I'm not to the sermon yet. <laughs> He's the image of the invisible God. You can see him. The God, the firstborn over all creation. Never been half God, half man. Full God, full man. You know, you know, what, what, who, who in the world is that? By him all things were created. That's a lot of stuff. Everything. By him, all things were created. And you're bad now than me and saying, I'm a nut because I bow down to the one they said, the writers, everything was created by him. There's a lot of things on planet Earth, including you. He got you here alive. I'm talking to you about life and death. If you're visiting and say, I wonder if I ever put my faith in the death of Jesus to remove my sin, because I have a lot of them. And he had none of them, not one. Things in heaven he created, and on earth he created it, visible and invisible. Things like atoms and molecules, he just like, no problem. Light. What, uh, Mr. Atheist, uh, right before the explosion that went bluey and all this stuff appeared, well, good night. there's a ball of water. It's a, it's a, it's a ball of water. It's, it's, it's Earth. Yeah, there's a lot of planets out there, a lot of water out there. They just go boom, you know, and you get all the water you want on the planet. Well, how much water have y'all found that, uh, past planet Earth? We, we, we got three-fourths water here. We got a lot of water. How much water have y'all found once you went to looking out across the cosmos with these big telescopes? They said, well, we haven't found any yet. I said, you haven't found any water yet? They said, not a drop. <laughs> What's your problem? <laughs> Surely one would have water. We're working on it. We think, you know, this planet here, let's, Got the time. The signs look like it may be some water. They're hunting for water because they think water is what made you and what made me. What department in salt water made me? Oh, there's on the back water over there. I don't believe water made us. I look at them ducks. And that color code on them wood ducks, 
beautiful. What department in salt water said, water, let's make a duck. <laughs> and I mean, I want this thing to rip. Who's going to make this color? We just take it. They won't even let a guy like me walk in the schoolroom and talk about these matters against the law to say what I'm saying right now to you. It's against the law. If you try it in a school, how's our school systems going in lieu of looking at Jesus? Thrones, powers, rulers, authorities, all things were created by him and for him. Don't mess with Jesus. Bow down in front of him. He is before all things. That answers the question of what was there before the cosmos got here? Before the loud explosion, Mr. Atheist, they say nothing was here before the explosion. I said, so nothing was here and nothing went boom and all this light. I didn't know nothing could do that. <laughs> that they actually believe this. Everything was created by Jesus and for Jesus. He's before all things. I can believe before it went boom, and there's the earth and that ball of water and the land started coming out of it and all these things started coming on it. And Jesus was there to make sure it all happened. In him, all things hold together. He's the head of the body, the church. He's the beginning and the firstborn from among the dead so that in everything he might have supremacy for God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether things on heaven or things in heaven, in making peace through his blood shed on a cross. We're back to the gospel again. Once you were alienated from God, you hadn't obeyed the gospel. Jesus wasn't number one in your life. You didn't believe he came down and died for you. He was buried and raised from the dead. You missed it somehow. Once you were alienated from God, I've been there. So have you. We weren't as sinful as you are. Didn't take but one to do you in. Just one. If we started right now, started telling each other our sins, we're going to be here for months. Well, you know, it's pretty bad, but let me tell you what I did one time. <laughs> Once you were alienated from God and were enemies in your minds because of your evil behavior, all of us at one time or another has participated in evil behavior. It's covers a lot of ground. But now he has res reconciled you by Christ's physical body through death to present you holy in his sight. To present me what? Holy in his sight because of the blood he shed not counting any of your past sins against you, not counting any of your future sins against you. That's a great place to be. Holy in his sight, without blemish. You say, you mean to tell me when I came to Jesus, every mistake I had ever made was wiped clean and never brought up again and nothing in the future, no sin, could knock me out. He just says, get up, keep going, get up. Don't do that anymore. Get up, get up. 
That's better than your sins alienating you forever. I'm going to make the point in a minute that he was the greatest defense attorney ever. Never lost a case. He'll get you out of here. Free from accusation, you are now, you, the people of God, you are without blemish. You are perfect. 100% perfect. By one sacrifice, the Hebrew writer. The Hebrew writer said, by one sacrifice, watch. You talk about a, a clean sweep. Let's see. By one sacrifice, he has made, God has made perfect forever those who are being made holy. When you come to Jesus and you die to sin and you're buried with him in a pool of water and you come up and the spirit comes into your heart and your mind, you say, I am now one of the ones who has been cleansed. I am right now under God's covenant. I am, let's see now, uh, I'm free from accusation. I'm holy. I'm without blemish. I'm free from accusation. That's perfect. You say, perfect. How could, with my mistake, they're not being counted against you. Get up. Pray to God that you won't behave like that tomorrow. So we get to my lesson. Here's the lesson. And I'm going to do it as fast as I can. Who is Jesus? He's your life. He's your life. He gives you life and immortality. Without him, you're not going to get that, ever. There's going to be death for you. I read it to you in 2 Thessalonians. He's going to punish everybody who does not know him and does not obey the gospel. You're not getting out of here alive without him. Life and immortality. The all-powerful promise so that you could be looked at as holy in his sight, without blemish, free from accusation. He promised. It's impossible for him to lie for crying out loud. He promised. I'll give you this. I'll give you life. No one else can do that. Can't touch it. Creator of everything and everybody. You say, I wonder how I got one. I was what? Knitted in my mother's womb. And that's why Satan wants to run in there and kill children while they're in the womb, trying to kill them, trying to kill them, trying to kill what God created. A dastardly thing to do. Murder your own children? Surely not. That's how sorry and low down the human race is. They need to repent and turn to God. Creator of everything and everybody, sinless, no mistakes, ever, no mistakes, none. And you're in him. Boy wonder, 12 years old, and the big dogs, of the, the, the teachers of the law and Pharisees, they were like, who is that? That's, is that that woman, that carpenter? They said, that little old kid knows a lot of Bible. They were stunned. He was out thinking, the old dudes, a man-made wonder, a God wonder, a miracle worker, a snap, nothing to it. I mean, miracles, miracle after miracle after miracle. That's why for the first 10 or 12 chapters in the book of Matthew, it just shows you how powerful Jesus is. Don't mess with him. He's the Alpha and Omega. He is he and he alone. He's omniscient. He's omnipotent. He's omnipresent everywhere at once. He's the way. He's the truth. He's the life. He's the resurrection. Jesus, destroyer of death, full of grace. He fixed it so if you could be like him, he'll fix it. He does fix it. So we're like him. Sins are not counted against us. King over heaven and earth. That's a lot. He is indestructible. So are his followers. Did you ever think you'd be indestructible? Well, you are. 
You will close your eyes and it's like a momentary sleep. You get to be 90 years old, maybe you're 76 like I am. All of a sudden, look, your, eyes, your heart stops. Yeah, did y'all hear the news? Yeah, oh, Phil died. Oh, so-and-so died. That girl there, that woman there, she died. She died. And he died. All you do is you close your eyes. No time passes. And you open them and say, yippee. <laughs> Thank you, Lord Jesus. Indestructible. You say, oh, these Bible verses, they're Bible verses. Prophet, that's Jesus. Jesus the only one on earth Let's face it, he's the only one on earth who's what? Who's good. He's going around doing good and performing miracles. We just look and we say, good night. How in the world? Mind reader, Jesus. He is the only lawgiver, the only judge. Don't worry about the ones that you worry about the ones that kill out the minds in, the, in, your, in your body. Make sure. Don't worry about the momentary like that. I'll raise you from the dead. Only supreme being there is on heaven and in earth. He's both places at once. He is the epitome of love. He's the man of mystery. They were looking at him like, who in the world is that? They wouldn't have crucified him if they had known he was going to save the world. I mean, did he ever slick them? And they didn't even know it. He's the greatest defense attorney of all time. I'm off that sheet, and here's another one. Uh, let's see. He's the ultimate life changer. He conquered death for us all. He's alone, he alone has canceled the written code. Oh, my goodness. Ten laws, and we can't keep them. Just ten of them. We can't do it. We say, oh, no, I tried, Lord. I never did get. He forgave us. He's the ultimate forgiver. He's full of grace. He's full of mercy. He is perfect. He's the bread of life. He's the greatest healer who ever lived. He's the redeemer. He's the reconciler. All the fullness of God is in him. He's your guarantee of eternal life. He is the greatest servant ever seen or heard of. He is Lord of all. He's our high priest. He's your seal. He's the answer to all your problems. The greatest sacrifice, second to none. He is the great I am. He's your savior. He's your escape hatch into eternity. He's the greatest intercessor ever. He's the way. He's the life. He's the resurrection. He's your brother. He's blood to blood kin. You, you are the, the same family. You're like, good night. And I'll shorten it before I go through all these. You should have heard enough. Don't mess with Jesus. Get down and bow down to him every time you read. He's the fullness of God. I'll stop with this. He's the light of the world. He's the, he has absolute power over Satan. That's needed, by the way. You need somebody in there. He's the manifold wisdom of God. Jew or Gentile through faith may approach God with freedom and confidence. He's the greatest forgiver ever. He'll save you from the guilt of sin and death. You get toward the end, Jesus is, there's one Lord, his name is Jesus. One faith, your trust and faith in his death for you, his burial, his resurrection. Jesus, final word on everything. And I left out a lot of them. You say, you are kind of uh, fired up about this Jesus. When it gets in your head that you are going to get off planet Earth alive and live, and live forever, I am happy for you and me and Bill Smith that showed this to me about 50 years ago. I'm out of here.